Hello and welcome to another Precision Flyer Repairs video. This one is about a 343 from 1955 that has a two position reverse unit in the cab. It piggybacks the motor inside the boiler. This completes the trifecta, if you will, of 080s recently that have come through my shop. This one's from a customer, and as you recall in an earlier video, there were two 080s that came from another customer, and that was a 343 with its reverse and its tender, along with a 346 that had a four position reverse unit attached to its motor, so that was also considered in the cab. So you have 343 reverse and tender from before, 343 with two position reverse unit in the cab with this one and the 346 with four position reverse unit in the cab from the previous video. And that pretty much makes up the lineup of those 80080 Pullmore equipped switcher steam engines from AC Gilbert back in the day. The 343 with the reverse and the tender was manufactured from 1953 to 1954. And then they put the reverse on the motor on, in the 343, such as in this example, from 1955 to 57. And the 346 was only produced in 1955. This engine is dated 1955 inside. Uh, there was no legible month. So that fits right in the pattern. Anyway, this one came with a lot of issues, and um, again, I was told, make it look good and run like it should, so that's what I did. It required virtually everything addressed. I uh, can't think of an exception. It did need the smoke unit overhauled this time. All the drivers taken off, broken apart, worn parts replaced. All the loose ones, of course, were tightened as they were reassembled then again. It needed new pull mores in the rear. It had one really odd pull more. It must have been an aftermarket from some time in the last 10, 15 years, I suppose, but not one that I'm uh, prevalently aware of. And then the other one was steel rim. It now has uh, new old stock pull more wheels on it, and everything's um, quartered and balanced nicely as a foundation for the engine. It runs pretty smooth. The motor, the motor, yeah, that came all apart. And in fact, in this case, the motor was so badly um, affected by the, the running bi uh, bias, or what I sometimes refer to as the syndrome, where it runs faster in reverse than forward. Um, as much as I took measures to try to reverse that, um, it was characteristically just flawed that way. And I, I think that may have been because it was run with square brushes that are too long Sometimes you find uh, the brushes in these things are um, three-eighths of an inch long, and really that's too long by the time you have the spring in there, the brush cap in there, and everything adjusted the way it should be to fit inside the width of the cab. And uh, I think it just prematurely um, wore that bias into the armature. So this has a brand new old stock late steam engine armature in it as well. There's not a whole lot to the tender other than, of course, the uh, running gear underneath and the pickup shoes off, disassembled, clean polished, reinstalled, fresh lubrication on them and so forth. So um, it had suffered some damage in the past. The headlight, you can tell, doesn't have the visor on it. And actually that's held in place by some JB Weld done by someone in the past. But I think it's turned out pretty nicely. It does not have a cover back on the two position reverse unit. As you can see, um, it didn't come with one. I don't have any spare and uh, believe that's a simple enough thing to add on if the owner would care to do that, that I'll leave that up to them. Um, the paint's in pretty good shape. Uh, it did take a wash and a drying. Um, actually, the whole thing was swimming drowning, dripping in a fluid 
that I think was smoke fluid. Um, I'm hoping it was smoke fluid. Uh, it smelled like soured old sweat socks, the entire engine and all its packing material. So it took quite a lot of washing and into the nooks and crannies of everything, mechanical and just physical, to get this in the condition that you see it today. And uh, one in which you don't have to wear your respirator uh, to be amidst it. But um, its uh, patina is pretty good and original. And um, without any further ado, you know, let's see this one in action. I would like to say thank you so much for watching my videos. I do appreciate it. If uh, you want to subscribe, please hit subscribe and then the bell and the word all next to the bell so that you'll receive notification of any new material that I post. And if you'd like to know more about precision plier repair, well, how about let's get this right side up so you can read it. If you'd like to learn more about Precision Flyer Repair Services, uh, just go to PrecisionFlyerRepairs.com, my website there, and uh, click on the Services tab. Uh, if you'd like to contact me, click on the Contact tab, and don't forget to click on the More tab, because on the More tab you'll find uh, comments from customers whose trains I have repaired, as well as uh, a page of how-to um, and galleries of photographs of things. So feel free to go there and look that up and drop me a line from here uh, or anywhere really with this Gmail email address now I've held it up here for the last half an hour and uh, enough of that. Okay, let's see this 343 two position reverse unit in cab classic American flyer post-war steam engine in action. It's running on about 13 volts measured at the rail head while the engine is running. I think it came out running nice and smooth. Balanced the way it ought to. With more juice it can really get up and fly, but I'm just going to keep it at a steady pace. Now here, let's see, I had to throttle it way back so that it doesn't throw itself into reverse coming down the hill. We'll see if it does or not. Oh good, it made it. It's right on that edge where if I don't have enough throttle, it won't make it up the incline, but too much throttle, it'll get up the incline fine, but on the way down, then because it's coming so fast downhill into that curve, it can just tip the tender enough, and with these two position reverse units, it takes very little to activate them when they're in good tune. Oh, that was another thing I forgot to mention. This reverse unit did have to be disassembled and um, cleaned and adjusted and made to work properly because it wasn't. And these two position reverse units, well, I'm not a neurosurgeon, but I'll tell you, Working on those, I think, is the closest I want to get. Uh, they're little tiny contact tabs and um, very delicate contacts inside and outside the unit. Um, we have to be very careful about how hot you get your soldering iron because of not the wire being affected, but what might be on the other end of one of those tabs could get melted. So there we have it. Oh, uh, talk about reverse. Why don't we try reverse? This reverse unit will trip at about seven and a half volts measured on the rail head while running. It turned out pretty good. And um, like most new flyer engines, it runs faster forward than reverse. Uh, most new old stock armatures and very highly uh, very fine condition, low mileage engines, you will find run about 20% slower in reverse than forward. They start to go the other way um, through use. But it's kind of nice because when you're backing up, you're probably in a yard situation. 
wanting to couple up so you don't want all that much speed anyway but then when you go forward well you like to imagine that on the main line having to get that fast freight to where it needs to go and so it's good to have the speed you need all right well there you have it the completion of the trio as i mentioned of uh previously 343 smoke i mean reverse in tender this is a reverse in cab two position unit and then it's uh, their sister engine the 346 with the four position reverse unit in the cab also from the previous video thanks again so much for watching and until next time be well and have fun running your trains